hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for being here and i really appreciate your time i'm gonna be talking about this interview that is going viral <laughs> of the actress dandy newton she is doing this as a press release for her upcoming film and really it's just once more another example of how colorism is very misunderstood and how people really do not fully have a grasp on the issues concerning colorism so i'm going to play the clip and then i'm going to come back to the rest of my commentary i've wanted so desperately to apologize every day to to, to darker skinned actresses to say i'm sorry that i'm choked i'm the one chosen my mama looks like you it's been very painful to have women that look like my mum feel like i'm not representing them that i'm taking from them taking their men taking their work taking their truth I didn't mean to, you know, but I do think that any women of color who, whether they're pale or whatever, who've managed to help other actors, you know, get into this business, we, you know, we, we, we matter. I was worried about my light skinness because my light skinness has been more problematic than being black, is being light skinned has been way more problematic than being black in my life, literally. I was black in England, I mean, dark skinned. And so then I went to America and I was dark skinned. I thought I was dark skinned and I would describe myself as dark skinned. It's like, you're light skinned. And suddenly I was someone that, you know, f you for being light skinned. I got more prejudice from black people. I didn't understand. I literally didn't understand. I thought, you're my breth brethren, what's happening? So interestingly, I now realize that my like internalized prejudice was stopping me from feeling like I could play this role when it's precisely that prejudice that I've received. It doesn't matter that it's from African-American women more than anyone else, it doesn't matter. I received prejudice. Anyone who's received oppression and prejudice feels this character, right? So it's actually, I love the fact that I overcame that. And it was these guys going, you're the one, you're the one. So painful to be dismissed, to be distrusted by African-American women, darker skin than me. And they look like my mom and I love her more than anything. So in this video, Dandy says that basically she feels some kind of sorry or some type of guilt because she understands that she has maybe taken opportunities for dark-skinned women, particularly as an actress. She gets to represent roles in which, you know, call for a black woman. So she understands that a lot of times she may have stepped on the toes of black women, um, in particular, dark-skinned black women. And I guess this entire cringy little interview was like an admission of guilt with some of her frustration over her skin tone being thrown in there and possibly her resentment towards black women because she specifically names black women as the main people who have made her feel discriminated against and child i i have said this so many times on my own channel there are many other people weighing in on this conversation and just the conversation of colorism in general that have dredged over this many times and explained what's really going on and yet it is still shocking to me to an extent not completely to an extent just how many people still don't understand the issues with colorism like the actual issues so the first thing i wanted to say is that tandy is not in control of what her representation has been used for right she is not a producer as far as i know she does she's not a creative director she does not have any studios she's not you know someone hiring herself for anything okay she is just a biracial woman who fits a certain look and she has been chosen based literally based off of something that her parents did and the phenotype that she has that is exactly why she has been chosen and that is not something that we want her to apologize for. And it's also not something that black people and dark skinned black people want biracial people or racially ambiguous people to apologize for. Because we understand that it is not something that you have control over. 
if anything, the only thing that we are seeking and any of, you know, most of the time is accountability is understanding and acknowledging the privileges that come with being biracial or that come with being a black person who is light skinned. A lot of times racially ambiguous biracial people choose not to even acknowledge the privileges that can come with being biracial, that come with being able to occupy both spaces depending on how you feel at the moment or what it is that you desire, how you want to identify. There is a privilege that comes with that. In the same way that there's a privilege that comes with being a light-skinned black person because you can then occupy the same space that a racially ambiguous person occupies. You are not processed the same way that a dark-skinned black person is. So some of the associations that come with dark skin that are negative, designed to create narratives about dark skinned people, or should I say black people in general, that justify why we have been treated certain ways are linked to dark skin. And when you are light skinned, that allows you to escape some of those, not all, but some. So those are the privileges that a lot of times dark skinned black people are looking for people to even admit because for so long, the treatment that dark skinned people have received people act like it's you know we're all making it up like it's in our hands like it's not real and so that's all that we really care about is admitting the social consequences and rewards that colorism introduces next she says that in the uk she is considered dark skin and then when she came to america and she found out that she was not dark skin she was confused she was like oh my gosh what's going on for my brethren and it's really interesting that she says brethren, and then later on in the clip, she says black woman specifically. But okay, sis, no, okay? We really have to stop this ridiculousness, okay? I understand that possibly in the UK, which is largely populated by white people, that there is a different history or slightly different historical context when it comes to how certain people of color are identified. I understand there may be a slight variance, but colonization happened everywhere and it was the same people who are doing it. OK, let's let's really stop being ridiculous. So we understand that a light skinned person, whether they're just a light skinned black person, again, can occupy the same space as a racially ambiguous biracial person. No one is looking at Sandy Newton and saying you're dark skinned. Nobody in the UK was looking at Sandy Newton and saying she was dark skinned. That was never happening. OK, so when she says that, that really allows me to see that while she's supposedly acknowledging that she understands her privilege, she really does not because she doesn't understand that no one ever actually thought she was dark skinned nowhere she went on this earth. So that's that's ridiculous. No. Then she says that, oh, you know, my light skin, my light skinnedness has always created trouble for me has always been an issue for me and listen this is more of the reason why i always say it is important that black people and specifically black people who are phenotypically black and there were therefore would face the consequences associated with being black and yes i'm saying consequences as a catalyst because that's what matters right Issues matter based off of them being an, um, a problem for somebody. That's usually why someone is marginalized and usually why it becomes an issue because it creates problems. So, yes, the black people who are phenotypically black, right, who have who have that phenotype cause issues for them in society. They need to be the ones gatekeeping blackness. And I feel like what would happen while it may seem strange or weird because of, you know, for so long, black people have participated in the one drop rule. Why I think that's been so damaging is because when you have those people who are biracial, who occupy two spaces or who sit on the fringe of blackness, there is an identity issue that comes of that that I think a lot of people are not honestly talking about. And that's why I say that there needs to be a distinction because there is a difference. There is a different set of experiences that you go through when you are biracial. And that can cause you to have many issues growing up, shaping your identity, who you feel you are, where you feel you fit in. And that is a very unique and specific issue 
that I feel like if more biracial people knew they were in fact biracial and not black, because in the white community, they don't allow him to be like, oh, I'm white like you. No. So if more biracial people grew up with a distinction like, yes, you're biracial, but here, let me support you as a biracial person versus them constantly feeling rejection or feeling strange or feeling weird because they're not white enough to be white or they're not black enough to be black. That will overall cause a different set of outcomes, not just socially, again, for those people that may be struggling with identity issues, but then when it comes to the issue of representation and media, we would no longer have the possibility of hiring biracial people to represent blackness, which then goes on and creates the issue of people taking jobs, people taking up space, people taking opportunities for more traditionally phenotypically black people. Let biracial people have their own spaces. Let them have their own identity and let's begin to build that for them so that they have support concerning how they are because you're, because biracial people are not black in and, and most cases, especially if they are not phenotypically black looking, I say this all the time, you're not going to have the black American experience. You're not going to have the experience of a black person if you don't look black. It's very simple. Even if you think that you're black or someone is saying you're black, and that's someone usually being a family member, people outside of your home know that you are not just black, just like they know that you're not just white. It's the same thing. And so I think a lot of this happens where you have a lot of biracial people carrying around animosity towards black people in particular and white people too because if you go on tiktok now they're starting to talk about it but for the most part we kind of heard it usually actually directed at black women just like sandy did is this animosity of rejection and not being accepted well that's because and if you really understand colorism you would know that colorism is based off of you being better than me Colorism is based off of you being my replacement. Colorism is based off of you being a more palatable version of black, representing me and taking my space every single time. It's an erasure of me. So while I don't think it's necessarily okay to mistreat uh, racially ambiguous people, if you're a black person, I, I mean, I, I, why participate in someone else's oppression just because you are? You don't know, you understand what I'm saying? Well, I don't understand, or should I say, why I don't agree with that? There's a reason for that. And the reason is systemic and it's political. And we have to understand that that is actually what's happening, right? We have to stop saying or acting like, oh, black dark-skinned women are just mean. Dark-skinned black women are just evil. No, it's based off of the way that society has established them at the bottom and placed you at the top because you have more white in your blood it's your whiteness that allows you to be treated better in some cases and i feel like that's why this conversation constantly goes in a circle because you have people who just refuse to understand what is actually being said and what is actually the problem and you have people who just will never will because it's not their experience and they don't have any reason to invest in understanding it because they don't they're not affected by it and while i I don't know. I don't I don't know of Candy. I don't really follow her career. I don't know her personally. I don't have I have not really observed her as a person. I don't feel like she meant harm by this interview. I don't feel like she meant to be condescending or facetious, but it came off in that manner because she spent a lot of time talking about having light skin privilege and then she kind of walked it back and said, Oh well, you know, my light skinness has been a problem and, you know, I had to get over it. I had to triumph it. Well, that's not the same thing as with a person who is subjugated by colorism for their skin tone. They can't just get over it. They can't just triumph because society says that they're less intelligent and less viable and less capable and less attractive and everything else because of their skin tone. And then she says, oh, well, anyone who has faced adversity can relate to my role in this film. Which again, a false equivalency because <laughs> all adversity is not equal. We understand that all all adversities are not the same, even though they are they are all adversities. They are all not the same in terms of the damages. And we know this. Right. So that's all I have to say on this topic. I <laughs> I kind of get tired of having this conversation because I feel like I personally have repeated myself so many times and I 
feel like the people who participate in this conversation have repeated themselves so many times as well. And it kind of gets frustrating that people require so much education concerning dark skin and colorism. White people aren't able to understand what's actually happening versus what's not actually happening. And particularly with black people, I don't understand with my own people, is why we have not pushed forward distinguishing ourselves in light of all the issues that making everyone black has caused over the years, over the decades. So many of the things that constantly spin around and constantly just, you know, something like they're just in an endless circle, this endless loop and nothing really gets better is, is slightly because we as a people are not willing to do the things necessary to gatekeep our race, to gatekeep our identity. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to give my video a thumbs up before you go. And comment below if you're feeling what I'm saying or if you're not. Whatever your reactions were to this clip, <laughs> comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. And if you disagree with what I'm saying in this video, just be respectful. That's all that I ask. But yes, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.